what it is, again, it's calcium sulfate, contains roughly 20% calcium and 16% sulfur in the sulfate form. And that's really important because this material is so finely ground and it's uh, water soluble. It's very, very reactive in the soil. And uh, uh, that's important. Essentially, it starts with high quality, high calcium limestone. Uh, it's pulverized into face powder texture, okay? And then, uh, so they put that into a slurry tank and keep that blended. Meanwhile, uh, as they're burning the coal and the flue gases are coming through the process, they're removing uh, the ash and some of the gases. And so the, the whole process here, if we look at the process, uh, the ashes, the metals, the, some of the gases are removed by electrostatic precipitators, by filter bags, by other processes. Then the limestone uh, in this water solution is sprayed up into the flue gas, which is pretty much of a clear gas at this point. And the calcium carbonate reacts with the sulfur dioxide, making a product called calcium sulfite, which is kind of like toothpaste. And then they put more oxygen into that and ultimately get a slurry of calcium sulfate gypsum. And then they draw the water out of that with a vacuum on a filter press. And we have the gypsum that we use then in the field. Most of this material is uh, what we call wallboard grade. These, these uh, scrubbers are made in such a way that it produces a high enough grade that it can be used in wallboard. And for agriculture, that's really a good thing because that makes it almost ideal in terms of uh, sources of gypsum. It makes it pretty much the ideal type of gypsum to use for agriculture. It's important to know that because the fly ash is removed before the gypsum's made and the metals are attached to the fly ash, the gases are pretty much clean of, of metals once the gypsum is made. So the gypsum itself has very little loading of metals. When we look at the first column here, this is what the EPA standards have set. This is the maximum amount of metals that can go in, that can be in these types of products like gypsum, arsenic, cadmium, copper, etc., etc. These are the maximums that are allowed. This is what's actually in the FGD gypsum that, uh, for example, one of the analyticals from uh, Indianapolis Power and Light. And this column shows us that where the blanks are, it's actually non-detectable. And where it is detectable, it's under 3% of the allowable. So the bottom line is, FGD gypsum across the board with the new technology and scrubbing and separating that we talked about this morning is very, very clean. It's one of the most, the cleanest sources of gypsum we have relative to uh, mine gypsum, for example. It's got a lot of impurities. So that's important. The bottom line is when you use FGD gypsum on your fields, it's actually cleaner than the background soils that you're putting it on in many cases. So you don't have to worry about polluting your land uh, in using gypsum.